So this is a follow-up uh, session on the previous one where we talked about query feedback. So in this one, we are going to run the actual insert query. So we just studied how we can give feedback to the user by you know redirecting them to the same page. And we studied different approaches and we chose the one where we redirect them to the same page. And in the page, we used is set function to check if the button was pressed. And then we, in that area, we performed the actual you know operation and then we provide feedback to the user in, in a proper way. So let's go back to our, our insert query. But before we do that, just refresh our memory on the insert query. Now there are three ways you can use the insert query in SQL. So we have insert into the name of the table, and then we use these brackets to specify the list of the columns so that if not necessary in order, and we say values and we specify the values in order of whatever we enter at here, then the list of the columns. The second way is insert into table name and then we say values and then we specify all the values only. We don't specify the column name. So, but the, the issue with using this is we have to specify all the values. We cannot skip them. So if you're adding something which is which does not include a required value then you will be in trouble so you have to we have to provide values for everything okay and in order here in the first one you can change the order or you can omit some which are not required which are null which can be null okay and then the third one insert into table name we use set well if you use set you specify the column and the value together so, instead of, so the difference between the first and the last is that you are specifying column and value together whereas in the first one you were separating the column and the values. Okay, So in my opinion the first and the last would work for anyone who was not having something uh, to put in order so that you know you, uh, you know you, don't, you are not going to add all the items. So in our case let's say for example we don't have a file but our database is expecting a file as well the image uh, field but we don't have that right now so we cannot use the second one the second one expects everything to be there we can make it empty but I don't want to do that I don't want to add something empty I either want to add the value or I want to leave it empty you know not say not provide a string which is empty so you can use the first and the last one we'll use the last one because the the option the good thing about the last one is you can actually see which value is has which value where which column has which value right so this is just you know a basics of what you have might done earlier in this one so let's go back to our page where we had written uh, in the form tag we had added action as add item so it comes back to the same page and I'm using is set method to check if the button was pressed or not and inside that I get a list of everything that was passed to me which is na ID name and price and then I provided them with feedback but this feedback is not correct because the item was actually not added yet right so I'm going to remove this feedback and I'm, I don't need that feedback because you see at the bottom I have the feedback paragraphs already here so I would just need to go down and you know show this or this based on what the query return okay so let's do that uh, first of all, if you remember, to run a query, we need six steps. The first three steps, we have already done them. And we have put them inside a file called dbconfig. The first step was to initialize the variables and then make the connection and check for errors. Now, this is something that we have to do in every page that we run the query. So what we did last time was to, instead of repeating this, we would just put all of these things in a separate page. And we will just include this page whenever we are using the query. Okay, so here I'm going to go back to the top of my page and say include, and I'm going to point it to DB config. So which will essentially mean that I'm doing the first three steps. And once the first three steps are done, the next thing that I would like to do is I would like to go down, and at this point, I would I know that the first three steps are done, I have to do the remaining three steps which is create the query, execute the query, and process the results. So let's do that. So first of all, step number four, which is creating the query. I'll just go there, create a query variable, and I specify my query, which is the insert query, right? So I'll go back, say insert 
in to and table name which is in our case is stuff stuff and we say we will going to use the third the third or just third option right set so insert into stuff set or we'll use name equal to value combinations so for this you need to know the name of the the fields inside your database so for for us we had id name and price so we say id equal to and I specify the variable with the ID. So here it will be dollar PID, right? And then I will say comma, and I will add the other one, which is name. Name equal to dollar name. Now I cannot just add dollar name. The CPID is a number, is a, is a, is a, is a number. I added it as an integer. But name is a string. So in a query, whenever you are adding strings, you have to specify them inside quotations. I cannot use double quotations because I'm using double quotations outside. You see this? So I will put them in single quotation, which is okay. So just please make sure that you understand this. If you use double quotations, it will close the string over here. So everything else will become an error code. So okay, should, I don't want to do that. And then we go back and the last one is the price. Price equal to dollar price, which is also a floating point of double data type so I, I don't need to put quotations over here I only need to put quotations whenever I'm uh, whenever I am setting the value to a string okay and then that's it that's my query and I would like to execute this query so how do we execute the query we just say store them the value in the result and say dollar uh, no sorry my sql i underscore query and we'll pass the connection handle which was dollar con which we set inside the db config and then we have the query once we put the query inside it uh, we get the dollar result right now if you remember in the previous cases in the in, we used dollar result in the select query when we use the dollar result we expected that this dollar result is actually a pointer to an array with the result because we were expecting the result to be either, you know more than one column and more than one row but in an insert query, the result is not a column or rows. It's not a table. It's just success or failure. So it's a Boolean value. So the dollar result is actually Boolean. So I can just show this if dollar result. So dollar result here is a Boolean value. So I don't need to you know check whether dollar result has a pointer. I don't need to use a fetch command to you know convert it into a row and pass the row. That's only needed in a select query. So here the value of the result is boolean zero or one. So in this case, what I would like to do is do nothing first of all. So just do this. So I have dollar result here. Now dollar result can be either zero or one. Now one way to do this is just go down because we have just set the dollar result right. So we just need to first of all add some PHP statement here. So PHP and then inside. So I would like to show this one. So let's have an if statement here. If statement and open the bracket and I will just go back and close this. Right? PHP and close this. So I would like to display this statement, this, this one item added successfully to the database only when the result is 1, because the result is boolean, it's 0 or 1. So when the result is true, or boolean, or 1. So how do I do that? How do I do that? Now here, first of all, in the if statement, or else, I can show this one. Else, if it is 0, I can show this. So else, if it is something else, then I would open my bracket here, and close it here. Okay, so I'll show this one. So if it is something, I'll, I'll we'll put the conditions in a little while. I'll show item added successfully when the result was one. If the result was zero, then I will show this. Else, I will show the form because that means that I'm coming to the page for the first time. So I'll start the else here. And then I will end it at the end of the form here. Because I want to show the form only if, you know, there is no result. There is no result. So I'll go PHP and close this form. Okay. So let's 
say this. It's not correct because we haven't completed our if statement, right? We have to specify a condition. Now, in this case, the condition would be, let's say, let's example, we are here. So the condition in if over here would be if the result here, if the dollar result here is equal to one. But let's let's do that. If dollar result, okay, we can just say if dollar result because you know uh, dollar result would be would be enough. Okay, if dollar result, which will tell me that if the if the result is okay or not. Okay. Otherwise, if not of dollar result. Okay. If dollar result is true, that means it will go over here. Else, if not of dollar result, because if the value of the dollar result was zero, then it will go here. Else, if something else happened. Okay. Now, what we would like to do over here is, you see, the dollar result is initially not set. When you, when you come to the page for the first time, this code is not executed. You remember I told you that this code is executed only when you press the button. So in the initial one, this code is not executed at all. So what happens is it will go immediately down here. So we also have to stop this code from executing when dollar result is not there. So how do we do it? Yes, you guessed it right. We do not want to use, we will use again is set. Okay, so let's go back. So is set dollar result. I say and so if is set dollar result and dollar result has a value which is equal to one. Okay, and then we can go back again over here and say if is set dollar result and so if both of them if the if the dollar result is set and the value of the result is one. In the second case, if the result is set and the value of the result is zero, else it will go down. So let's save this page. So I hope this is clear, right? So we just got the items, we run the query, we get the result. We get the result. And then the result value is either zero or one. Okay. Based on the result value, we go down and we, we get these values. We, we will use is set to check if the result was set and the value is 1. If it was not set, if it is also set and the value is 0, then it will go here. And else, if the result was not set at all, because we are looking for the first time when we go to the page, right? So let's go to our page and refresh our page. See over here in this page, you don't see the two messages that we were seeing before because the result is not set. Because the result will be set when the query is run. Okay, so let's go back. Say 110, so something. Say test, and we'll simply say 100. Okay, and I'm going to add it. The item was added successfully to the database. So let's go back to our database. Localhost. Okay, and we'll say PHP my admin. I'll go back to the database. I go back to my page and I went. I go to the store database and the stuff table. You can see 110 test and 100. We skipped the image because, as I told you, we don't we do not want to add the image right now. So and the item was added successfully. So this is what we wanted, right? Okay. So if we go back, uh, let's go back to the page. And here in this case, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it. Let's say again add this one. Because 110 is a, is a unique key, right? So it should fail. So let's go back and say add. Sorry, the item was not added. Why? Because I'm trying to add 110, which is the primary key. So the item was not added. So, uh, so both of these things are working. When I go for the first time, I don't see the messages at the top. Because these messages, these messages will only be shown when the result has a value of 0 or 1 or it is set. Initially the result is not set because I did not run the query. So this message will not be shown. Only the form will be shown. That's the that's the else statement here. The else is for when, when the result is not set at all, go to this part and show them the form. I get the form, I enter the form, it goes to add item again from the top.
this time the button add is pressed so it will execute this part of the page which would run the query if the query was successful the result is one if the query was not successful the result would be zero then i go down and this time i'm using my messages here to say if the result is set and the value is one then you can also equal say equal to one but this is you know boolean otherwise if the result is not set if the result is set sorry but the value is not result that means the value is zero so we'll make it one so not of result and the result was item was not added else otherwise if it's for the first time we'll go back and show them 